What's up guys, Justin here with the sketchupessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out an extension that allows you to not only import materials, but also PBR maps directly in SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. Okay, so one of the things that's kind of frustrating about bringing in new materials inside of the SketchUp render engine is in order to import those materials, you have to import all of these different maps. Right? Remember that without the metalness, roughness, normal, and uh, ambient inclusion, the materials aren't going to look that good. But the problem is, if you download these from somewhere like Polyhaven, what you have to do is you have to create a new material. You have to load in the texture maps one at a time. So in this case, I have to load in the metalness, the roughness, and the normal. And in fact, this time I don't even have a metalness. So we're going to bring in, so we're going to bring in roughness, normal, and ambient occlusion. And so even then, when you apply the material, you still have to go in and make adjustments to things like the size, and you can't really adjust the material at all unless you go into like an, a photo editing program or something like that. So that's definitely a valid way to bring materials into SketchUp, but in my opinion, it's not necessarily the ideal. So luckily, there's an extension, which we've talked about before, but it just got upgraded um, so that it actually interfaces with um, the actual material maps inside of SketchUp called Architectures. You can download Architectures for free by going to the extension warehouse. It will most likely be um, one of the more popular extensions in the warehouse. Um, so right here, you can see how it's been downloaded a bunch of times, but you can also just go into the search and just look for Architectures with an X right here. And what you want to do is you want to install this extension. And so when you install this extension, what it does is it gives you access to the architecture's material library. And so if we click in here, what it's going to do is it's going to pop up a window that looks like this. Now you're going to have to create a login in order to do this, but this gives you access to all of these different like families of materials. So I use this all the time for uh, just about everything, honestly, but it gives you access to actual um, manufacturer materials, all sorts of different things. So let's say, and we wouldn't do this, but let's say we wanted to put this brick on this material, on this surface. All you have to do is click on import to bring it in. That'll bring it into your SketchUp material library. And then you can just apply it to a surface like this. The nice thing about this is you also have the ability to adjust the material. So if I get here and click on edit, and let's say I wanted this to have a different tint or even a different material. So I could click in here and I could add or adjust my material like this and click on import and it'll adjust that material inside of your SketchUp model when you click on update like this. So that already by itself was really cool. And I use that functionality a ton to access um, all sorts of different materials. I highly recommend this um, for that, no matter what you're doing. Um, I use this all the time. But in addition to that, we now have the ability when we import a material. So let's go with a metal, for example, we're going to go into our metals right here. And let's say we pick this zinc metal, and we import it. Well, when we import it, and I'm going to apply it to the surface right here. But if we go into that zinc metal, notice how now it's automatically bringing in the metalness map, roughness map, and normal map right here. And so one thing I do want to note really quick is the PBR materials that we're going to talk about are a paid feature. So if you go to Architectures website, which is architectures.org, you click on Git Pro right here, it's going to give you the option to get a pro account. Now a pro account is $7.99 a month or uh, like $90 a year. Um, so it, it's not a ton of money from a monthly basis. And what it gives you access to is it gives you access not only to the material library, which you can access for free, but it gives you access to the PBR um, maps as well as like the bump and normal maps and um, some other options in here as well. And so that is something that's worth noting is to use the PBR functionality. You do need a pro account. It's not especially expensive. Like I pay this one gladly and it's 100% worth it for me. But that's kind of up to you. You can use the other ones for free, but just note that uh, as we're talking about the PBR maps, you need the paid version in order to do that. And so we can adjust those in order to get the effect that we want. So we can make this more or less reflective by adjusting the roughness. We can make it more or less metal by adjusting the metalness, and we can make it more or less bumpy um, using the normal map. But I didn't have to set up any of this myself. It all automatically set up inside of SketchUp. And so let's say that we wanted to apply a different material. So let's say that we wanted maybe like a wood material for our little stand right here. You could search for wood, 
And then when you search for wood, you've got all of these different options, or you can create your own. So let's say we wanted to create our own oak paneling, for example. What we could do is we could click on this, we could click on edit, and remember that this has the ability to do things like adding a stack pattern or a staggered pattern right here. So let's say we wanted to make this a wood panel. What we would do is we would add the stack pattern, rotate it right here, and we would go down and we would adjust the edges to fine edges like this, and we would change the edge color. So we don't want the joints to have a mortar. We just want it to have a solid fill because it's just going to be a black material. So we would just adjust this right here. And then you can also come in here and adjust things like the width and the height. So in this case, because we rotated it, we actually want to adjust the width. Um, so in this case, say we wanted this to be longer, we could say this is going to be 36 inches long, like this. And you could also set the number of rows and columns that are included in your texture material. And so say we wanted this to be a little bit longer, we could set it to like 12 by 4 or something like that. But I've basically created a completely custom material in here, which I can then import and I can apply to this surface. Well, the cool thing about this is this got brought in and we can adjust our size. So in this case, we want this to be maybe two foot or something like that. But this got brought in with those maps. And so what you're getting here is you're actually getting a wood material that's set up to be kind of reflective. Now you could come in here and adjust this. Like for example, in this case, these joints are maybe a little too strong in the light direction. So I'm gonna bring them over to the left. You could also adjust the roughness in here if you wanted this to have more of like a varnished look or something like that. But I didn't have to do anything manually with maps over here, this brought those in automatically. And so this is really powerful. And I will say, you know, some of this is a limitation of the SketchUp render engine, right? It can only create the results that it can create, but having access to a gigantic customizable library of materials that you can actually customize things in here is just super cool. So let's pick something different. Let's go with um, maybe a, we'll bring this core 10 steel in and we'll apply it to this surface. So we've got the core 10 look, we can adjust the size to make it smaller, but notice how especially metallics inside of the SketchUp library look really good. Notice how you're getting reflections off of the non-worn portions of this where it's reflecting less in the other areas. But if you ever wanted to make an adjustment, the cool thing about architectures textures is you can right click and click on the option for edit with architectures. It'll pop this right back up and you can make changes. So in this situation, um, so in this situation, say we wanted a different kind of metal, we could just go in here and pick maybe this core 10 steel and then click on update. And when we update that, what it's gonna do is it's gonna replace that material image inside of your SketchUp material library like this. And so another powerful workflow that I use for this is um, I use the extension material replacer from TomTom Tom a lot. So if I go into the extension warehouse, there's an extension called material replacer. You can find it right here. And when you install this, you need to make sure that you install TomTom's library extension as well. So you can find that just by looking for TT underscore LIB. Right here, you need to install this as well, but those are both free extensions. And when you install them, what it does is it gives you the ability to replace materials in your model. Well, in this case, Architectures has a material library of fabrics. So if I go into fabric right here and I click, notice how I've got all of these different options, right? So bunches of different fabrics in here. And so let's say we wanted to make this a fabric, like this charcoal, what you could do is you could import the fabric right here apply it to this surface, and then use the extension material replacer in order to swap out this material for this material inside of SketchUp. So this chair looks really good and you're able to um, replace materials with other materials. So same thing if we wanted the wood to look different, we could take a wood material and say we wanted something a little bit darker. So say we took this walnut material and I'm just gonna apply it right here. So we need to import it to SketchUp. We can apply the walnut here, and then we can use material replacer to replace this material with this material inside of your model. Now, the only thing I will 
say about this is SketchUp's library right now tends to be like over reflective in some cases and um, it just reflects way too much. So if you don't like the way this is looking, you might try just toggling the roughness off or something like that. You might also use an extension like through paint in order to make sure that this material is mapped on here properly, but you still have access to a giant library of materials directly inside of SketchUp that you can now apply to these surfaces. All right, so let me know if you've tried this material library. I just love having that conversation with you guys. So Architectures is one of my favorite tools because it's so easy to bring in all of these different textures and materials to sketch up and they're editable and adjustable. But I'd love to hear what you think about Architectures in the comments down below. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.